I'm John Hanna for CBTV Darnet in New York, and we have Dr. Bazan Damaj, the CEO of Africa's Biosciences, joining us at our Wall Street office. Thanks for joining us. Hi, John. Thank you for having me again. I'm pleased to be here and, um, and answer your questions. When we last interviewed you back in late January, your stock price was at $3.85. It has since skyrocketed to about $5 and $6 range. Um, what was the development? Uh, there seems to be a lot more interest in your stock right now. I mean, it's, it's, it's really a very impressive um, uh, increase in the, in the stock price that we had, and that speaks to, you know, the, um, to, to the strength of the company. But a lot of things have happened since, since, since then. I mean, and the, the main three positive things that happened were first the, remo the removal of the ongoing concern by our auditors, um, the advancement we've made on the Viteros front, and the advancement we made on the Femprox front. Okay, let's talk about your first topic there. Uh, tell us more about it. Well, on the, on the removal of the going concern, this was a pretty important milestone for us since the company had a going concern for the past nine years. And for our auditors to, re, to remove the going concern speaks to the financial strength of the company, not at present, but also the future strength of the company. As you know, we, we, we've increased our financial um, uh, situation where we have cash now well into Q3 2012. Uh, excluding, you know, potential partnerships that, that, that we're going to do and the upfront payments com coming from those. So that was a huge milestone for the company and, 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 and a show of strength to the investors and, uh, and it seems that the investors are starting to believe again in the, in, in the company and it's, uh, uh, it is uh, viability the strength. And the second one, the uh, Vitaros? Well, I mean, you know, Vit Viteros is, is, we've made a great progress on Viteros. I mean, I w would like to start by talking about the, um, the, on the development side. For Viteros, we, we have, as you probably have seen in the press releases on, on last week of April, we filed for market authorization in Europe. And that was a huge milestone for the company because that has increased the, the, the value of the, the drug quite extensively. And with the filing of Viteros in Europe, it really changed the landscape of our current negotiations with our potential partners in Canada as it opened the door now to the ability of maybe combining licensing Canada and other European territories actually in the same discussions. Um, and hence, you, you, you probably have seen that we added a, a general counsel uh, as part of our uh, staff now in order to help move things forward and be able to meet the timelines we have for that. So we're moving very, very, very strongly on, on, on that point. At the same time, what we are doing, we are pushing the manufacturing of Viteros in parallel of our commercialization discussion. We want to be able to be ready, have enough stock manufactured of Viterra, so when, when the, 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 the proper commercial partnership is in place, that we can launch pretty fast. And we have been successfully doing that in, 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 in parallel, although the market doesn't see these things, but, but a company has to be able to plan uh, successfully and be able to have enough uh, uh, stocks of the drug ready whenever the commercial partner is signed up and ready to launch. So that was, that was actually a lot of... A lot of uh, 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 exciting advancement we have done on the Viteros and in addition we are continuing to move forward in preparation to filing for other uh, territories like Latin uh, America for example uh, you know uh, uh, Australia New Zealand and uh, and so forth is Viteros available in the Canadian market now well I mean we we uh, as I said we are ramping up the production commercial production of Viteros to be hopefully on the market on the second half of 2011. And the third development, the uh, Femprox. Yeah, I mean, F Femprox is, 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 is a very uh, um, interesting and a very promising uh, potential blockbuster drug for us. I mean, Femprox, uh, you know, we have done one phase three trial outside the U.S. for Femprox, and we have observed at the 900 microgram dose that the patients achieve statistical significance with 44% positive response rate. Uh, and as you know, with having a phase three under our belt, that makes us uh, the most advanced in the development of, of, of this product for the female sexual arousal disorder. And the population, the, the, the ITT, the general population that we are targeting for that, are actually all women that have FSAD, so it's not a, a subpopulation of women, uh, similar to, like for example, the other drugs being in development. And that is actually a, a, a great uh, result for us on the clinical side to be able to achieve uh, 
44% positive response rate um, in a general uh, uh, population uh, of women. So at, at that front, what, what we are doing, we formed our clinical advisory board with really the, the, the best uh, KOLs in the US and in Europe with the intention actually to move the clinical development forward. Once you have a phase three completed and you know that phase three gave you statistically significant uh, clinical, um, uh, high clinical response, then it will be easier to, to design the, 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 the um, the clinical protocol in the U.S. needed to file a, 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 an NDA, and this is exactly what the clinical advisory board um, is uh, in, in the process of uh, of preparing to go to the FDA and and propose our our uh, phase three for uh, for Femprox, and hopefully we will be able to announce that um, in the coming future. So that, that's, that's a lot of development uh, going on on that. And as you can see, Viteros had, you know, people are starting to realize that Viteros has the potential to being a blockbuster drug and it's not just another replacement of Alprostadol. Now Femprox is coming along pretty fast, pretty strong, and, and that is actually another potential blockbuster drug that's, that, 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 that is in our hands. And I think the market is realizing now that this company has a very strong pipeline and there is a very advanced pipeline where, for example, Femprox, we are actually preparing to get guidance from Canada, Europe, see if we are able to file with the current phase 3 data we have for market authorization while we will start initiate discussions with the FDA to, um, to, to uh, agree on the phase 3 protocol needed for an NDA in the US. So that's a lot of progress, a lot of value that's being added to, to, to our products. You have Vitaros and Femprox as your products right now. Any other products you have in your pipeline? Well, I mean, we discussed Viteros, we discussed Femprox, we have Mykova, which as, as we, we, we announced, we are actually uh, now in the process of requesting uh, guidance to meet with European and Canadian agencies to request guidance for filing for onychomycosis, um, uh, both Europe and, and Canada. Uh, for Prevanco, we are still working with the FDA um, uh, for the SPA protocol for the phase 3 for uh, liver cancer that we filed uh, to, to reach an agreement uh, with uh, them. Ra uh, Rava for you know, syndrome, uh, uh, we have announced that we filed uh, for orphan uh, disease, uh, orphan drug designation uh, in preparation of filing our uh, phase uh, 3 protocol uh, as discussed in the pre ind meeting we had with the FDA. Any other closing statements? Yes, I mean, you can see that, that there's a lot of excitement now about the company. We are internally very excited about the development and, and, and the, 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 the fast progress of our, um, of our project, products, discussions. Uh, I mean, you know, for Viteros, we, not only Canada and Europe, but we're also moving forward now towards Latin America, towards, you know, Pacific Asia, in order to, to register this product and, and being able to have partners and put it on the market. Uh, we are moving forward with pushing Femprox uh, in, in, in different countries and also we are moving Mykova uh, uh, further in, in, our, in our discussions. As we announced, we are actually now pre uh, preparing the request to meet with the health agencies in Europe and in Canada uh, to get guidance to file for market authorization of Mykova for onychomycosis. A lot of progress going forward. We are still working with the FDA on the Prevanco in order to get through the SPA for the Phase 3 um, uh, protocol we um, we submitted uh, we submitted for 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 review and, and this 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 is really all positive things going on a lot of milestones coming up uh, and inflection points coming coming up uh, um, uh, eras which we will announce in the uh, in due time and and we are really thrilled uh, that the market is reacting positively to all the changes and to all the the progress that the company the company has done and we will continue with this, this, this path of moving all our products as, as fast as possible on all fronts and, 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 and keep bringing up the value of, of, of our products to our shareholders. That's Dr. Bazan Damash, the CEO of Africa's Biosciences, joining us at our Wall Street office. And I'm John Hanna for CDTV.net in New York. Thank you, John. Glad to be here. Thank you.